Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to my channel learn to teach So, in this video we are going to talk about explaining the purpose of an algorithm. Now, I am going to start with the term algorithm here. An algorithm is basically the steps that we do to complete a task. Steps to complete a task. And so far, we have seen that an algorithm can be represented by using a flowchart and pseudocode. Flowchart is a diagrammatical representation, whereas pseudocode is, is where we use English keywords to represent an algorithm in form of instructions. Now, these flowcharts and these pseudocodes are basically used by a programmer. Why? Because a programmer is going to design a program for this algorithm that is represented in form of flowchart or pseudocode. So, to design a program, this is very important for a programmer to understand the given algorithm. And when it comes to understanding an algorithm, it means that you need to understand two things. Let me write it here. For an algorithm, we need to understand two things to convert it into a real world program. And what is that? The first thing is the purpose of the algorithm that why we have written this algorithm, what we want to achieve. And the second thing is the processes. Processes are basically the steps that we are going to perform to achieve this purpose. Yes, these two things are very important. Whenever you read an algorithm, you have to figure out two things. What is the purpose? Why we have written the algorithm? And what are the steps or the processes that helps us to achieve the given purpose. Now let me quickly explain you the book example. In this book we have given a pseudo code here for output and alarm sound. If you remember the alarm application that we have seen in structure diagrams, it had three subsystems, set time, check time and the third one was sound alarm. So in this Pseudo code, we are going to cover the subsystem sound alarm for this alarm application. Now, what is the purpose of sound alarm? Sound alarm is look at this. The purpose of the following pseudo code is to output the alarm sound at the appropriate time. So, it is basically what you are going to output the sound for the alarm that you have set for a given time. Now, how you are going to achieve this. Let's just look at the pseudo code and figure out what are the processes that you gonna do to achieve this purpose. So the first thing here is the repeat until loop. It is used for iterations and for repetitions. It means you have to do something again and again. And what is that? Just look at the instructions inside the loop. You have to wait for 10 seconds. And you have to get time. Get time is basically a process, a predefined process or a function that helps you to get the current time from the system clock or from the device that you are using. You are going to fetch the current time of that device. And once you do that, what will you check? Here is your end condition. The end condition for this loop is when the time or the current time equals the alarm time. Let me explain you this. Let's suppose I have set an alarm 7 a.m. Now what I will do, I will check if the alarm time equals the device time or the current time. If it gets equal, you will be out of the loop. Yes, if this end condition becomes true, if both the times bec becomes equal, you will be out of your loop. So let's suppose if the time, the current time is 
it is not equal if it is 650 6 not equal and if it becomes 7 am both times becomes equal you will be out of your loop and look at here once you are out of your loop then you will output alarm sound so this is the appropriate time when your alarm time equals the current time then you become out of the loop and you will output the alarm sound or produce a sound for the user so that he will come to know that the alarm sound is achieved or sorry the alarm time is achieved so this is how you are going to represent the purpose and the processes look at the processes quickly the first process was waiting 10 seconds the second one here get time getting the current time the third one is check the current time with the alarm time and the fourth one was output outputting the alarm sound when the times match so the processes are basically the steps that you are going to do number one two three and four these are the four processes that helps us to just achieve this purpose of producing the sound at the appropriate time so this is how we understand this algorithm and the processes now quickly moving towards activity 7.6 of your book let's understand the given flowchart and pseudo code and identify two things one the purpose of algorithm second the processes involved to do it okay here we go this is the information given to us have a look at the flow chart this one is the flow chart and pseudo code this one is the pseudo code below identify the purpose of the algorithm what is the purpose and the second thing identify the processes included in the algorithm okay and the final thing here is what would be output if the numbers 7 and 18 were input we will do this question once we understand the algorithm now let me see the flow chart first here we go in this flow chart the starting symbol the start or the terminator flow chart symbol is here that helps us to identify start and start stop of a flow chart or an algorithm the second is the first process here this is not a process this one is a process the first process is the input process you are taking two numbers number one and number two are basically referring it is referring the variables there are two variables named as number one and number two in which you are going to input two numbers from the user next to it is a decision flowchart symbol in which you are going to compare number one and number two by using a comparison operator next to it is if number one is greater than number two look at here then you will move towards this process and you will print number one is largest otherwise if the comparison is false number one is not equal to number two so definitely number two is going to be largest so what i understand from this simple flow chart is you are going to find out the largest number out of the two numbers and then you will print it let's just look the pseudo code to understand it further this is the pseudo code for the same algorithm first process is the input process taking two numbers from the user here second is we are using if then else conditional statement to compare the two numbers number one greater than number two remember if the statement is true we will go here and print number one is largest and if the statement is false we will go to the else statement and it is print number two is largest so this is just same as the flow chart so let's suppose let me just quickly write down the first two things purpose and the processes the purpose of this algorithm is very very clear to us what is that to output 
the greatest number by comparing the two numbers the two numbers taken as inputs this is what is the purpose of this algorithm and what are the processes that are going to help us to achieve this purpose so processes can easily be seen from this pseudo code the first process was the input process just writing it here first one input or inputting two numbers the second process is comparing the two numbers and remember that the third process will be either you will print number 1 if it is largest or you print number 2 if it is largest so you will be doing any one of these processes so the third one is outputting the largest number out of 2 so this is what is the processes and what is the purpose of this algorithm now quickly moving towards this interesting question here the question says that what would be output if the numbers 7 and 18 were input it means that in my variables if i put number 1 as 7 and number 2 as 18 and then i'm going to compare it number 1 is 7 is 7 greater than 18 is it true or false it is false so if it is false or it is no you will print number 2 is largest or in other words you will say okay so the output that is shown on the users screen will be number 2 is largest instead of number 2 you will get the value that is 18 printed 18 is largest this is what is the output of this flow chart or this pseudo code when you are giving two numbers 7 and 18 as inputs so this is all for the activity 7.6 thank you so much for watching this video i hope now you can find out the purpose and processes of any algorithm if you do a little practice stay tuned stay connected in the next video we will inshallah be starting another topic bye bye and do not forget to subscribe